Remember that a binary compound is composed of two elements, and it can be either molecular or ionic. We've named binary molecules in another video, and now we'll learn to name binary ionic compounds. Any binary ionic compound starts with the name of the cation first, then it's followed by the name of the anion. For example, CS2O is cesium oxide. Cesium is the cation, and oxygen is the anion. But not all ions are quite this easy to name. Some metals have multiple ions that could form, like copper, because copper can have a plus one or a plus two charge. We have to add another small step in naming. You start with the cation, then you say the Roman numeral from the stock name, and then lastly, you say the anion. So here we have CuO and Cu2O. The first one uses copper two ion, so this is called copper two oxide. The second uses copper one ion, so it's called copper one oxide. You can tell which cation is used from the anion in the formula. Oxide ion always has a two minus charge, so the first copper must have been a two plus to balance out the two minus, and the second was a one plus, so there needed to be two of them. The overall charge of a binary compound is neutral. Let's see how cations and anions can fit together to make neutral compounds. Let's say you know you're working with iron three and oxygen. Iron three has a plus three charge and oxygen has a minus two. If we add these charges up, we get plus one. It's not neutral yet, so we need more negatives. Just add another oxygen. Now our total is minus one. So we're gonna have to add another iron three and the total is plus two. And finally, one more oxygen with a two minus charge brings us to a neutral zero charge. We have six positive charges and six negative charges. So the formula for this is Fe2O3 because we need two iron atoms and three oxygen atoms to form the neutral compound. You could write the atoms out every time, but there's a nifty trick that will help you figure out the formula from ions really quickly. I call it the drop and switch. Kind of like the bend and snap, it works every time. In the drop and switch, you take the numerical value of the charge and you drop it to a subscript and switch atoms, like this. Iron three becomes the subscript behind oxygen, and oxygen two becomes the subscript behind iron, and you get Fe2O3. Let's try another one. Calcium two plus and sulfur two minus. Drop and switch, and you get Ca2S2, but really, that's actually a little redundant. You don't need those twos, you can simplify this. And we'll simplify it to just CaS, calcium sulfide. Polyatomic ions are just ions that are made with more than two elements. They follow the same basic rules as binary ionic compounds, except they carry the charge across multiple atoms. Naming compounds with polyatomic ions starts with a cation, and then you add the polyatomic anion. So PbSO4 is lead to sulfate. The rules of Roman numerals still apply to the cations that have multiple ion possibilities. And sometimes you have multiple polyatomic ions that are necessary, like in this case, with calcium and the nitrate ion. Calcium is two plus and nitrate is one minus. So when we do the drop and switch, we need to show that there are actually two nitrate ions, but it already has a subscript of three after the oxygen. So we use parentheses to show that there are two of the entire nitrate ion, and we get calcium nitrate. You can even have a compound that's made of two polyatomic ions, like this one. To figure out what it is, you may need to look at a list of polyatomic ions, unless you somehow have them all memorized. NH4 is the ammonium ion, and C2O4 is the oxalate ion, so the name of this is ammonium oxalate. It's actually pretty easy, you just have to look up the words. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.